Good evening. The fire at Man Gulch, which started from a lightning storm on August 4th, lay dormant, then folded in high temperature, spurred on by crowning at the trees. Traveling quickly through the gra grass when the gases and winds glanced off the rocky terrain to cause a blow-up that would claim the lives of 13 smoke jumpers is not the malicious villain of our story. It is, in fact, the identification of the flaws of the United States Forest Service of the time ignited through the same random chance that combines initial combustion with fuel to consume the area around it. That fuel was their approach to leadership and training, providing them three weeks to learn the skills and then selecting them at random to jump with a foreman of whom they had little to no experience listening. Their policy and budgeting, encouraging men to hold on to their equipment at all costs, dropping them on every small fire and poor communication between those on fire, on the fire. And perhaps most egregious, their ethics. Responding to disaster by closing off the public, denying any wrongdoing. Of course, if they had not worked to improve their technology and fund all their research into disaster prevention, that would have been the spark of their next tragedy. Through the lens of a manager in the service of the 1950s, I make the following suggestions. We must improve our leadership and training structures. Three weeks may be enough time to learn how to stop a fire as an individual, but it teaches nothing about working as a team. We need the group men consistently throughout the summer if we were to take the smoke, smoke jumping program seriously. Those men should not only be trained throughout that time, but if we wish to improve their abilities, we need to give them jobs that contribute to their skills as a smoke jumper and keep them working together. Consistency is key when it comes to attacking these fires. We need to put these men into squads that vary in size, but always consist of the same men. And in preparing the leaders, we need to have them working with those men. Competition is the best option we have for providing men with the urgency they need to feel when life and death are on the line. In racing to complete training tasks against each other, they will create bonds and learn to listen to their leader, not only because that leader is placed and charged, but because that leader has proven their skills and knowledge time and time again. Building trust and bonds between these men risking their lives for our forest will keep disaster from striking again. Our policy must change to focus on the people we are sending out to fight these fires and their safety and the performance of their jobs and the budget we set aside must reflect that. The equipment is important, but not as important as a man carrying it. When disaster is looming, it must be dropped and lives have to be prioritized. Establishing communication is dire if we hope to co coordinate firefighting efforts and for the safety of our people. Radios and their backups should be available at every station and in every plane. And we must ensure that everyone is aware of the men, their numbers, and their position at all times if we hope to accomplish our goals. Finally, careful decision has to be made about dropping these men on the fires. Not every small fire is worth dropping smoke jumpers, and conditions have to be considered before dropping men on a fire that may well become a blow-up. In responding to disaster, we need to stay mindful of ethical behavior. In covering ourselves, we lose the trust of the people we wish to serve. We must keep research open, encourage community members to ask questions, and continuously strive to improve ourselves. The moment we stay concerned with saving ourselves, we stop working towards our mission of protecting the forest and providing for a healthy future. Our path to recovery is through opening our arms to research and giving out all information that is asked when it is so inquired. We must rebuild trust with the community, and that can only come with honesty. Many promising technologies can help us to improve the future of fo fighting forest fires, and they need to become a focus for our research. Mathematical models can provide insight into the potential spread and presence of fires. Wagdada's escape fire is the best option for smoke jumpers to ensure their survivor, sorry, survival when buffers cannot be breached. We must implement escape fire training and normalize their use in every fire where it applies, well before it may be immediately necessary to coordinate the location in the minds of every person on the fire. Our approach to these fires should not be to send men down as shock troops for every emerging fire, but rather to hone their skills in fighting large fires and conserving the budget as much as it conserves lives by letting small fires burn out or just be attacked from the ground. Finally, it's important that we reassess our recruiting, widen our approach to education, and encourage every American to join our service, regardless of race or nationality. There's a history of fighting fires to be learned from, and those go in our forest double.
And that goes well beyond the time of our colonization, and we would do well to employ the people who have centuries of insight into this fight. In drafting this analysis, I do not wish to simply condemn our actions. It is my hope that we can glean a few things to consider for the future of our service. A young organization, much like the individuals that contribute to its success, must learn from its mistakes if it hopes to improve. We now know the story of, Man of the Man Gulch Fire. It is our duty to ensure the souls of those 13 young men that something was gained in their sacrifice. Thank you.